We are learning more about the lives lost in that horrific crash that killed six people, including a pregnant woman in Windsor Hills. This new video just released. Look at that speeding car tearing through the red light, plowing into several cars, igniting a fireball. The registered nurse who triggered this explosive pileup has been arrested. Eyewitness News reporter Amy Powell live at the scene where people have gathered tonight for an emotional vigil. Amy. Mark, it's a crash that has shattered many lives. Throughout the day, family and community members have been coming to this intersection to remember the victims. Relatives and friends comfort the heartbroken father of an infant who died in a tragic collision. 11-month-old Alonzo was with his pregnant mother, Asheray Ryan. The 23-year-old and her unborn child also killed when their vehicle was struck by a speeding car. I drove to the scene. I ran past the police officer just because I wanted to fill her energy one more time. Yesterday, I truly lost it. Shauna Kerr says her sister, known to loved ones as Ray Ray, was in her third trimester. She was heading to her doctor's office Thursday afternoon. She literally walked out the door because we all live together. And she said, okay, I love y'all. I'm going to my doctor's appointment to check up on the baby. I remember <laughs> her coming over or me coming over and dropping my son off so I can go to work. They love my son. I loved her as like a sister. I mean, it still feels unreal. Dozens holding a candlelight vigil at the intersection of Slauson and La Brea, where authorities say a Mercedes driven by 37-year-old Nicole Lorraine Linton ran a red light before plowing into several cars, some of the victims ejected, two of the vehicles exploding in flames. The CHP says Linton has been arrested on suspicion of vehicular manslaughter. Community members spending time at the memorial paying their respects to the victims. I'm hurting for everyone that lost people tonight. I'm hurting for even the woman that caused the accident. But it hurts me because it could have been me. I drive down this intersection daily. Several people still out here on the street corner tonight. The district attorney's office is expected to make a decision, perhaps as early as Monday, about the charges that Linton will face. Reporting live in Windsor Hills, Amy Powell, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Shalom, Yasharala, Shalom. This is your Ak Kadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Rakhta. Yahweh be in the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty. And Yahweh Shah be in the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And today I'm coming at you with a topic pertaining to, you know, the young lady and her family that was killed. Uh, from reckless driving from this one uh, Eve, man. You know, over here on La, La Brea and Slauson Ave out here in LA. You know, the lady, you know, she had some mental issues and um, she decided to try to kill herself. And in the process of her doing that, she ran through an intersection right here, came straight across and, um, you know, took out six people, man. She murdered six people, you know, and, um, I guess she's gonna be in the court and everything, you know, and they're trying to give her 90 years, you know, but all this type of stuff, all this type of stuff could have been avoided, man, had she, had she had a husband, you know, that was guiding her in righteousness. You know what I'm saying? All this could have been avoided if she would have seek, went and seek therapy, seek counseling, you know, because uh, mental illness, is a very serious thing that goes on in Israel, man. A lot of us have uh, PTSD. A lot of us is just mentally unstable and unfit to live amongst other people in the society. You know, because all the trauma we done been through, all the slavery, all the damn uh, oppression that we go through, it take a toll on us. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, you know, it came to a head with that lady, right? Uh, took it upon herself to drive through an intersection and kill all these people, man. You know, it's unfortunate. But I got a couple precepts that I wanted to bring out. Just to edify our people, you know, give you a little insight, right? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 14. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 14, and it reads, where no counsel is, 
the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, right? So this woman, she didn't seek counsel. She was going through some uh, traumatic, you know, uh, issues that she was dealing with, but she didn't go and seek counsel. You know, we gotta, we gotta be there to counsel our people, man. Our people are needing us. You know, you can't just have all this wisdom of the scriptures and somebody come to you with their problems and you just, you know, brush them off or turn them away. No, you gotta really sit down and counsel our people, man. And our people gotta really go and seek counsel. You know, don't let people, you know, deter you from going to get therapy or going to see a uh, counselor. You know what I'm saying? No shame in going to get help. Especially for your sanity, man, for your mental stability. Don't let nobody tell you that you less of a person for trying to go seek help. Go get you some help. If you need marriage counseling, go to marriage counseling, right? If you need any type of counseling to help you from going off the edge, go get that counseling, man, right? Because it says where no counsel is, the people fall, right? And, and as you can see, people have fallen, man. Men, women, and children died in that, uh, that collision. Men, women, and children died, you know, from, from somebody that didn't seek counsel, right? Had she seek, uh, sought counsel, things could have been different. It say, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, right? Because you won't make a dumb decision when you have multitude of counsel, right? You can get, uh, that information can get soaked in and you can be able to make better decisions off the information that you just received. You know, and um, it's very important that Israel go and seek counsel, man. Right? Now let's go to the book of Isaiah 32 and 9. Right? Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 9, and it reads, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. Right? Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you, make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your lawns. Right? Because a lot of our women in this society are content with what they have. You know, they comfortable here in Babylon. You know, the damn serpent catered to Eve here in Babylon. So they content, you know, they think it all is supposed to be handed to them. You know, they think it all is supposed to be laid out for them. That they could do whatever they want. That they could sleep around with many different men as they want. Get all these spirits attached to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know the, the young lady personally that, that, that decided to run through an intersection. But I could tell that she had a lot of demons on her, man. Whether it came from sleeping with many different men or just being wicked in the world. She had a lot of spirits on her, right? So it's time for our women to rise up and really look at the bigger picture. Turn back to the Heavenly Father in these last days. Humble yourselves down, right? Because a lot of people be depressed and miserable because they expect to be a damn celebrity or to be worshiped as a god or something, or as a goddess, you know, because that's what this society has taught our women, that. They are the prize that uh, every man gonna bow down and worship them. You know what I'm saying? And when that don't happen, women get miserable, man. They get bitter, you know? They get vicious. They turn into monsters, man, right? So it's time for our women to rise up and give ear to the speech of the Most High. Turn back to these laws, statutes, and commandments, right? Go seek wisdom, go seek counsel if you need help. Right, because mental illness is very real, man. Right? Now let's go to the book of Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Right? The book of Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. And it reads, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Right? So when you trust in the most high. The Most High will give you perfect peace when your mind is continually meditating on this word. He'll give you peace, right? The world is not going to give you the peace that our Lord going to give you.
forgive you. You would have had a peace of mind. That lady would have had a peace of mind had she been focused on the so like had she been focused on the most high. You know what I'm saying? He, she, he would have gave her peace. You know? But a lot of our people reject the word. They reject Christ. They reject his sayings. They reject his laws. And this be the end result, man. You know? This be the end result, man. Our people, our people got to repent, come back to these law, statutes, and commandments, man, and seek counsel. Keep your mind fixated on the Lord. That's all you need to be really worried about, man, is focusing on the Heavenly Father and trying to get into the kingdom of heaven. What's going on, King? Right? So, uh, let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 40 and verse 2 in the Apocrypha, right? Ecclesiastes chapter 40 and verse 2 and it reads their imagination of things to come in the day of death troubled their thoughts and caused fear of heart you know and those are the spirits that the most high put on you when you when you're not focused on him man he have your imaginations running wild right he said their imagination of things to come in the day of death she was probably so worried about uh, what's going to happen in her life, you know, now that she don't have her husband or now that she don't have her boyfriend Because word on the street was that she was upset with her boyfriend for breaking up with her or something losing her man You know what I'm saying? I don't know how true it is, but Her imagination started running wild and then she started thinking about end the end Then you start thinking about dying Then you be in fear, your heart be in fear, right? Because you're being wicked you know what I'm saying? Because you being lawless. Your mind is not focused on the Heavenly Father. So therefore, he turned you over to terror and consumption, man. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the curses as well. When you disobey his word, he turned you over to terror and consumption. You know what I'm saying? And this is exactly what happened. Right? This is exactly what happened. It's saying, um, I'm going to read verse 42 again. Their imagination of things to come in the day of death troubled their thoughts. Right? So the most I can send spirits down when you're not doing what he say to, to, to trouble your thoughts, man. And you don't want that smoke. He'll start putting in new thoughts, new imaginations that you never thought about that would terrify you, man. That would scare the shit out of you. Right? And that lady was terrified. Right? It say, and caused fear of the heart. And you know the heart is the mind, cause fear of the mind, right? You be weary, you be weary with fear. So you decide to end your own life, and you decide to end whoever life who's in the way of you ending your own life. You decide to take anybody out who's interfering with you trying to kill your damn self. But you didn't even die, you know? But you will ride in prison, she will ride in prison, you know, for a foolish decision that she made. Because it all boils down to, her seeking counsel in the time of need, man. You gotta seek counsel. Cause in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, man. Counselors can stop you from doing some dumb stuff, man. Making a bad decision that's gonna, that's gonna uh, determine your future, man. That's gonna dictate the rest of your life. A counselor can, can deter or redirect your mindset from making a bad decision. Right, so our women gotta rise up in these last days. You know, and the most high ain't nothing to play with. The most high say, I kill, I make alive, I wound and I heal. You know, when the most high put a decree out for an angel to come uh, put you to death, ain't nothing you can do about it. You know, so always be on your P's and Q's because at any moment it could be your moment, man. You want to be in good spirits, you want to be, uh, you want to have a perfect heart toward the most high. You know, I don't know about this young lady, her, her children, she was pregnant, she had a fiance, her, 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 her son was in the back seat, the damn uh, car seat was in the middle of the street without a baby in it. When this happened, you know, so it's like when the most high pour your car, you gotta be ready, man. You gotta have a perfect heart towards the most high. I don't know how these people was living before the accident, but the most high called them home, man. When you call your home, it's time to go, man. It's time to clock out. But the Most High is a power to be uh, greatly afraid of, man. You're supposed to be terrified of the Most High, because he could do he could do this to anybody. Because all of us drive through intersections throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? But let me get one more precept, man, because we gotta fear the Lord. 
right? Uh, let me get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 3. And it reads, For forward thoughts separate from God and his power. When it is tried, reproves the unwise. So forward thoughts separate from the most high. Thoughts that are difficult to deal with, man. You know what I'm saying? Insubordinate thoughts separate you from the most high. Wicked thoughts, vain thoughts, vain imagination, which 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 also is sin, because foolish thoughts is considered sin. You know what I'm saying? That separates you from the most high. And his power, right? And his protection. And that hedge that he set around you. You know, it separates you from them angels that he used to uh, encamp around you when you're doing what he say do. You no longer have that hedge of protection when you have forward thoughts, when you're thinking about lawlessness all the time, right? When it is tried, when it is tested, reproves the unwise, right? So when your thoughts and imagination is tested, when your mind is being put to the test, it reproves the unwise, man. You know what I'm saying? You think you got all this wisdom and you know all this stuff, but you can't even cast down vain and wicked imaginations, right? You got all this knowledge, right? You're a registered nurse, got all these certificates in Esau's kingdom, but when it comes to putting away immortal thoughts, putting away, it's like you're putting away mortal thoughts, man, you can't do it. You have no skill in it. Why? Because you don't read the scriptures. You don't apply the scriptures. So you don't know how to cast down imaginations. You don't know that the most high hate forward thoughts and pride. You know what I'm saying? So our people got, you know, you got to study. You got to come back to these laws. You got to come back to the wisdom of the scriptures. Right? And I'm going to close out with this one. Let me get the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11 and it reads, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Right? So knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You know, the Most High is a terrible power, a great and terrible power. He's also known as the King of Terrors. Right? He brought terror to this family, to these families that lost their life. That's terror, man. You know what I'm saying? He is the king of terrors. And through the terror of the Lord, we persuade man to turn back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. Because this could be your fate. This could be your fate. Any, anybody, any one of us, this could be your fate. You riding, going somewhere, minding your own business, about to go turn up and have fun, or about to go take the kids shopping, about to take them to go get some new school clothes or just going to the grocery store to get food for the house and your life get, get ended in the, in the blink of an eye, right? Because the Heavenly Father is great and terrible in His work. Through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You could be put to death at any time. We living in, uh, we living in Babylon, which is known as America, the valley of the shadow of death. Death is on every side, man. Any moment you could be put to death. You know what I'm saying? So through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men and women, right, to repent, humble yourselves, turn back to these laws, get your household in order, get your family in order, man, before it's too late. You know, and with that, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. It's H-O-I-L-A. It's H-O-I to the chariot's block. Inshallah, warm, Yahshua, Mom.